Hi everybody, it's Suzanne. And uh, today's painting that we're gonna do, well, I should back up. It's, it's winter here in, in Kingsport. Actually, today's a pretty day, but yesterday in the last couple, it seems like the last eternity of our winter, and believe me, I'm a summer girl. I like the nice warm weather. Winter is always an eternity for me. But it's been gray and rainy and lucky and nasty, and I've not been digging it at all. So I painted a painting that I, the way I wished my winter looked. And so I'm gonna go ahead and show you the painting. And it's just a winter sunset. But what was fun about this particular piece, I was able to get it done by an hour. So I'm gonna show you today how I did it. I'm gonna take you step by step, let you see my process of how I was able to knock this one out in about an hour. This is on an eight, this is on an eight by eight um, cradle panel. And uh, yeah, it was fun. I, it helped me <laughs> tolerate the current weather I was enjoying at the moment. So, and I was able to sneak it in between, like I had students in the morning, students in the afternoon, and I snuck it in right after lunch. So that's what I did. So I'm gonna take you start to finish. So again, thank you so much for joining me. If you are my subscribers, as always, thank you so much. Consider becoming a member on my membership platform here on YouTube, where uh, if you're doing pieces and say you go ahead and tackle this one and you need me to critique it and help you with your colors, we can do that. Um, I can become your painting mentor, your painting buddy, your painting coach, whatever you want to call it. I can be that girl. So look into my YouTube membership. Just down below, you can see the little button that says membership. Go ahead and hit it, and uh, we can become friends that way. Okay, so I'm gonna go, go ahead and jump in here, and I'll catch you on the other side. So it's just kind of gray and boring and cold and dismal, and it's winter, and it's like my least favorite month, um, season of the year, okay? I crave color, I crave warmth, I crave it all, so. Let's go on into my studio and see what we can come up with that'll just make me happy. I need happy colors. So here I have, I have just, this is a, just a, an eight by eight, um, little rough tooth. It's got a little bit of tooth to it, just so panel. Okay. It's a cradled panel and I really am craving doing a, you know, I get it. It's winter. I should just embrace winter. But lately, I mean, in the last two weeks, it's done nothing but rain here in Kingsport. We don't get a lot of snow. So I want to do a hot but snowy painting. Now, I'm just playing. This is a whole, this is a play date. So let me tell you about the colors I have here. This is Pyrene Black. And it's a black that has kind of a greenish cast to it. That is Winter Newton. This is a Sennelier color called Sepia. Again, it's kind of an earthy, browny, greenish black color. This is, ooh, indigo, also Windsor Newton. I have titanium white, I have king's blue, pale violet, and magenta. These are all Michael Harding. I've got Michael, ooh, no, this is Windsor Newton, yellow, cad yellow. This is Michael Harding's, ugh, ugh. Goodness, what is it? Yellow Lake Deep. I have a little yellow ochre. This is um, Blue Ridge. I have Ivory Black and Sap Green. These are Windsor Newton. So we're gonna play today and just kind of see what we come up with. I am wanting, I see a landscape. I see uh, doing a sunset or a sunrise. I guess it's gonna be a sunset. I want to use these hot colors. So if I'm going to use hot colors, in my sky, that's gonna create reflective light that's gonna fall in my snow, right? So let's see if we can just make this kind of fun. Okay, so I have this substrate and I really just want to have a lot of heat up in, in the sky. And I'll have some trees. I'm just seeing a very, a very simplistic landscape, okay? I want to have some snow. I like this, this, the negative spaces that, um, snow on grass creates. So I am really just wanting to play with color today. I, 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 this is a color piece for me. And what I use is almost, you know, I'm gonna go with my basic principles, how it's usually lighter at the horizon line. And I'm not even going to suggest where my landscape, um, I'm not 
of working out the composition. I'm really all about color here, folks. So I'm going to take, I'm going in with my, my cads first, or my yellows, because I want to keep them as pure as I can keep them. And so I'm just going to go with this uh, titanium white yellow cad. And I'm just going to go ahead here, just do it. I'm just doing it. So the, the, the best way to keep a um, straight horizon line, if you will, is by going fast. And I know this is like, there it is. I put that in there. So I'm, I wanted to lay in my hot colors first, but I'm putting up this uh, nice kind of gray sky up here above. And I'll make a transitional color between the yellow and the blue by mixing the two together. So I'm, I'm using a kind of a soft brush. I believe this is an eclipse. And you can see I'm taking that, um, that warm orangey or burnt orange combination and mixing it into my blue to make that transitional color into the sky. And then just bringing that up into the... Uh, upper area of the blue. Know folks that this is on my Patreon channel and you can get the full explanation of the color mixing, the brushes that I'm using, um, all the good stuff um, and the full one hour um, that it takes to do this particular piece is all on my Patreon channel. So be sure to check it out if you're if you're interested. Um, but that's what we're doing here. Just kind of laying in the colors and I'm trying to keep it soft, not so impasto. Uh, I'm just kind of, just kind of melding it in here, but I'm already feeling good because I'm getting to use hot colors. Again, the quickest way to do a straight line is to do it quick. And um, so I'm kind of putting on my uh, little horizon line here and I'm using that sepia color to suggest where the trees are gonna go. And I'm, I'm wanting it to, you know, to create depth. I'm needing to paint in that wet on wet here. And I'm just using a little bit of that sepia and popping in some trees in the background in the horizon line. And because I'm kind of winging it, I don't really have a known composition yet. But I'm, I tend to weight my um, paintings on the left. And that's just, for me, that's what feels good to me. And uh, so you can see I'll start going up there into the wet and creating my background trees, if you will.
always being aware of where my light source is coming from. I haven't put in a sun yet. Notice that? There, I will carve in a sun here um, to suggest where it's going. I, like I said, I was winging it on this. So um, you can see that a lot of the background trees have that warm yellowy cast to it because I wanted that light to fall on it. Again, this painting is really about light and color. This is why I'm playing. I just needed to play with this color. So you'll watch that some of the trees get pretty warmed up um, with the that russety orange that I created. And again, folks, if you want to know about all the different uh, color combinations that I'm using and the mixing and what I'm doing, uh, yeah, check out my Patreon channel. So as I drop in more trees, um, the trees that are coming closer to you in the foreground are going to be a little, little bit more, uh, you know, darker values for you. I'm using the nice little red dot pointed round here. Uh, it's doing the trick, and I'm mixing a little bit of. Uh, it looks like I'm just using sepia with a little bit of the um, indigo blue to create the trees. You know, again, I am just having a ball with this particular piece as I am trying to just knock it out, get it in here, dropping those trees, those trunks, and, and popping it in. But, um, yeah, this is this is fun for me, and I really needed this today. On this day, folks, I have to tell you, I was having a ball with this, and I knew I was under the gun because I had students coming in, but I just wanted to have fun with it, and, um, and I did. I really did. So, yeah, you can see that little... Um, that little pointed round, that red dot is doing the trick, creating those pine trees for me. I want to keep the light shining through the trees. And again, always knowing where your light source is, is important. So you'll see at some point, I will use my paint scraper and carve in where I think a sun is going to go. And then after I know exactly where my sun is, then I got to kind of warm up some of the trees. You'll see, we'll get there. All right, so I'm mixing some snow color here, and I, I really kind of get this feeling. I got to carve in, figure out where my sun is going. So I, I, I kind of see in my mind that I've got to have my sun, and I've got to create a, um, 
a path of light. So now that I've decided this is where my sun's going and I'm just scraping it out, I'm, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm signaling where the light path is going to go. So I'm going to go ahead and start laying in, laying in the snow. And notice, folks, that I did go with kind of a purple uh, snow, right? I used the pale violet, Michael Harding's pale violet, and I'm just kind of suggesting where snow is going. And since I do love negative space, you'll see that I'm going to create a lot of grass uh, as if the snow has melted off. Perhaps that hot sun has melted it off. Hmm. Yeah, now I'm mixing some fun greens to create that grass, the negative space, if you will, of the, uh, the grass that the melted snow leaves behind. And uh, you see the colors that I'm using there. It's ba mainly the, the sepia with probably the indigo mixed in. I've got the sap green right above. You can see it's dripping down into my greens <laughs> uh, that I'm mixing. But it's creating some nice, dark light you know when the when the sun's setting the light becomes very low in the sky therefore you know a lot of the greens are going to be kind of dark and um, and also knowing that when you're creating spaces like this the farther away um, you are in the painting the closer and smaller the spaces in the snow get right it's a perspective thing so I'm, I'm playing with that a little bit I'm trying to create that distance so you have the larger gr grass spaces closer to you and the ones that closer to the tree line are a little bit thinner smaller and uh, closer together does that make sense it's all a perspective thing
now that I have my shapes uh, of my snow in, I've got to kind of ground it a little bit. And I'm creating the shadow that you would see on this side of the snow. Since my light source is behind it, I've got to have some shadow. And it helps actually ground my snow. Now, now that I kind of have my, I know where my light source is actually coming from because I scratched out that little sun and I've kind of got my trees in, I've got my basic composition down, all that. Now I could start to manipulate the light a little bit more. So, you know, keep in mind too, folks, things that are far away are going to be a little softer, a little darker because the closer to the tree line here, I've got to cool it down a little bit because the trees themselves might create shadow that that light from the sun isn't able to reach yet. So a little bit further out or closer to the viewer is where the light's really gonna hit. So I'm cooling off the background just a tad and um, really kind of establishing everything. But you kind of have to ground your snow and remember always, always, always where your light source is coming from. And especially since this is kind of made up, I didn't know where it was coming from because I didn't really have a reference. But now that I do, you know, I'm able to go forward and go ahead and throw down some light. Now that my sun is in, I can go ahead and start putting down some warmer light on the snow, almost as if I'm creating a path. So you can see I'm using some yellows um, on the surface of the snow because the, the sunlight might be hitting that, at least in my imagination it is. So I am putting down the little warm bits of light on top of the snow. And that yellow against the purple really does stand out, um, especially if you see the painting in person. It really, really is sparkly. And I wanted it to just feel pretty and fun. And that's where I'm getting it. You know, this is, I'm, and I'm going a little bit more impasto. You can see this little tiny brush is loaded, <laughs> lo overly loaded. And, um, but I'm still, you know, able to pop it down. Since this painting has been painted completely a la prima, um, I don't want it to blend, so I have to sit that paint on top, so I have to load uh, pretty heavy. And you can see I'm adding some pinks in there, you know, the pinks and the yellows. It just makes that little path that this sunlight is creating, oh, you know, just magical.
And just like there will be warmth in the snow, there's going to be in that same path a little bit more light or warmth in the grass. So I'm lightening it up and adding a little bit more yellows to that narrow path of light that the sun is creating on my uh, winter winter landscape here. So you can see I'm lightening it up and warming it up in some areas just to kind of create that path that the sun is creating here. Now I'm just moving around the piece, seeing where little dark values might go underneath some of the snow, just to ground it a little bit. And there we go. We're done. I hope you liked today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Ta -da! It was fun, right? So doing the warm colors, and I think that's what I really needed the most. I have just been, you know, when it's when you don't see the sun <laughs> because it's been raining every day. I don't know, you just crave it, right? And I crave the light, I crave the colors. And what was fun about this piece is, you know, obviously the snow has kind of a light purple um, cast to it and the sun is bright yellow. So mm, use complimentary colors there. And I liked being able to catch the warmth of the sun and the glow in the trees here. This was really, and I tried to kind of make, if I decided to put the sun here, kind of created a path of light. It's kind of hard to see in this photo without it, but there's there's a path of light that falls right through here. Um, and that was fun. This kind of was a wing in it kind of thing. It was basically the uh, the process of knowing where your light is, you know, where your light is coming from and then just going from there. So the composition was just something I, you know, this is nowhere in particular, could be here, could be where you live, I don't know. Um, but it was me wanting to use color. So this piece really, truly was about color. Um, and I, of course, I like negative space, right? So playing with negative space, throwing down colors that make me happy. <laughs> and that's what we came up with. Again, it took about an hour um, and it was a really fun piece to do. So if you have any questions, go ahead and leave it in the comments section. I'll get to it. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and smash that subscribe button, hit the bell. You'll know when the next video comes out. And uh, yeah, from Kingsport, Tennessee, I want to say thank you for joining me and I'll catch you next time.